All right, hey, what's going on? I'm going to talk about uh, a little bit about what happens to your mower, your weed whacker, your chainsaw, every all these items that you go to start them at the beginning of the season, or maybe a chainsaw that you haven't used in ages, and now you have something to cut up, and it suddenly doesn't start, and you might bring it somewhere and pay a lot of money. Well, this happens more than ever now because of the uh, ethanol fuel, the alcohol in the fuel, and it really, really destroys the little carburetors, the ones that are like this big, the, like in the in the string trimmers and things. A lot of times, I don't even bother trying to mess with those carburetors. It's, it's like the orifices are so small. But normally, it happens on things like this that sit, you know, for the off season. You go to start it, you knew that it's, it ran, but now it's not, it's not running anymore. So I'm going to show you. Uh, what, what I found is nine times out of ten is the problem. So it's not the spark plug. Uh, my neighbor gave this to me before she moved, and she said she thinks it needs a spark plug. It does not, it does not uh, stay running or even start. But I'm going to show you uh, how to check that. So first thing on this one it has like an automatic choke, so I don't need to do anything. And this is a Toro, and I'm going to show you another one too. It had the same problem with, and that one is a snapper. They're both high quality machines. And, um, you know, this one has, I think, a Kohler engine. The other one's a brakes, both good engines. And watch this, it will not start. I got the stop lever depressed, otherwise it won't start anyway. Now, you take the air cleaner off, spray some starting fluid in there, Give it a yank. Runs until the starting fluid runs out. So uh, this one I'm going to fix second, and I'm going to think I'm going to uh, fix my other one first, the uh, the Toro. And uh, but they're both the same. You get the idea. I'll do just one of them. All right. Let's take a look. Okay, here's another example. This is another mower I have. Watch, I'm going to press the primer. This takes the place of old school mowers with chokes. Go to start it. After that fuel charge runs, it shuts right off. So we're going to take care of that. Okay, so you might be thinking, what happened to my mower? This mower worked went right up till I put it away after the season was over, like either uh, end of summer or fall or whatever. You take it out next spring and you pull and pull and pull and pull um, and it doesn't start. And uh, a lot of times you take it in for service, uh, they make a big story, charge a couple bucks, hundred bucks, like half the price of a, of a, of a new machine. And uh, reality, it's, it's usually a quick fix and we're going to do it. But what's the cause behind it? Why is this happening? Why did this not happen to me years ago? Well, what it is is the, the crap gas they, they, uh, the government uh, puts on us now with the ethanol in it. And uh, from my understanding, um, ethanol with, is out with nothing more than alcohol. And alcohol absorbs moisture, and therefore it's in your carburetor. It absorbs moisture out of the air and then it causes a, a situation called white rust. And what it does is it gets inside the main jets in your carburetor. And usually what that is is just simply it's, it's you have a float bowl down here and your gas is in there and it has a passageway up into the carburetor as the throttle opens, there's a vacuum. This is a closed throttle, throttle opens and the vacuum actually pulls the fuel up through this main jet and it mixes with air properly and then goes in the engine and burns. Now why it works on the choke is because you either push uh, like a plunger like this one has where you're actually like pumping like uh, the, the, um, the mixture up in there and it's, it's ready and it's available. The choke, um, it, it makes so much more vacuum pull it gets, it gets there in another fashion too. But it, either your engine will only run on choke, that's an indicator that you have a clogged main jet. This one does not have a choke, it has a plunger. So as you saw, as soon as we plunge it a few times, it starts right up and then runs out. 
and the thing stalls. Another way is if you take some starting fluid and you give it a couple shots like into your carburetor. Don't go too crazy, don't put your face over top because if it backfires you could be on fire. And uh, it starts right up on the choke cleaner or the, car, the uh, starting fluid and quickly stalls out again and only runs that way then you know that you have a clogged carburetor main gen. It's a pretty easy fix. Most people be able to handle this. Um, how do we prevent this in the future? Uh, one of the things maybe you could do is try this stuff called ethanol. Uh, this is ethanol shield. There's all different makes, all different um, colors of it and everything. What it does is supposedly um, guards against the ethanol. But what I think the best thing to do is, all right, use this. Um, you could you could buy gas that's ethanol free usually in the in the mower stores or Home Depot or something like that. Uh, has no ethanol. It's very expensive. That's a, that's a good idea too. Uh, maybe it's a good idea to use that in your last tank full. But what I like to do is, if possible, get the engine to run out of gas. Use up all your gas. Uh, you know, let it idle. Whatever you got to do, like run, mow the lawn again. Let it run out of gas, and then give it a few extra pulls to try to start it, and that helps draw out the the mixture that's stuck in your um, main jet. So. We're going to go and, and take this apart and we're going to show you how easy it is to fix this, okay? So, first thing I want to do is I've got to get this uh, chute off of here. And uh, a little grass action back there, we'll clean that while we're in here too. And uh, we're going to get to the flow pool, so um, let me get a closer look at that. Alright, so here's our carburetor with the air cleaner off and the chute off. Now keep in mind, uh, if you start these without this chute like this one here, it's extremely dangerous. I mean, there's the blade, okay? So, you know, you're sitting there, you got it running and you don't even think about it. Or sometimes it travels so quickly you can't even see it. And, you know, in, go, in goes your hand, now comes your hand with no fingers on it. So keep that in mind. Uh, you should really put the chute back on before trying to start it if you have one like this design like this now here's our again here's our carburetor this is our float ball right here and this is what we're going to need to get off to access those main jets there's a couple different types of main jets some of them are right in the bottom of the nut that's holding the bowl up it's just a little bit of a drilled uh type of pre-fit orifice kind of um and some of them you have to reach up inside the carburetor with with a screwdriver blade and uh, you know unscrew the jet let it fall out and you could actually easily hold it up to light and either see no light through it or very little and a lot of times you just take your uh, air compressed air and blow it and blows that clog right out of there uh, if you're gonna put something in there to try to poke at it keep in mind anything like uh, could it elongate the, the uh, change the size of the hull or even file it out bigger or a drill bit or anything and then it, it definitely won't run right so you want to use maybe a bristle out of, of, out of something uh, sometimes I'll use pull like a, um, a piece of wire out of a wire brush so I'm gonna get this carburetor loose and because it's gonna be hard to, to get that bowl out it's too close to the body here so I'm gonna take the carburetor at least off to the side so we can get to the to the root of the problem all right so um i managed to get the carburetor in a workable place with just taking the two mounting boss bolts out back there with the gasket make sure your gasket's still in place when you go to uh put it back there in place or replace it if it needs to be and uh one of the things that you know i like to do on my machines I just did this now is I put this shut off in there and that's keeping the gas from running out of the tank number two what you could do is at the end of every mow you could turn that off and it shuts off the supply going over to your carburetor and eventually it'll run out of gas within a few minutes usually and stall out then you could do the same procedure pull the rope a bunch of times so um, this mower is, is new to me, so in case you're wondering, well, why did this happen to you? And uh, so I got it like this. And uh, so now um, we're going to work on the carburetor 
and uh, I'm going to try to do this with one hand. I'm holding this and show you what I'm talking about here with these the jet situation. So like I said, it's either going to be right in this end bolt that I have the plug or the clog. Now, there you go. You see those holes right there? Okay, and that one at the end. That's most likely where my problem is going to be. Uh, there, you know, so that it's blocked and it's down in there. So there's a couple things you could do. Now, inside there is a float, there's a needle. Um, you pull all that stuff off if you have to. If you don't have to, uh, leave it alone. So I'm going to get some uh, compressed air. And like I said, I don't think we could see. Focus, focus. Maybe not. Okay. There we go. I'm using a phone camera this time, and it's not really cooperating. But you, you should be able to see light through those holes. All right, I'm going to blow it out. Uh, you got the point, okay? And uh, usually you can see even light this end as you rotate it around, and the, the lights from your room should actually be seen through it. So we're going to blow it out. Again, we have our jet. And what we're going to do is we're going to blow it out with one of these uh, types of air pistols. I have a couple different types. I have this one. I have this uh, one that's on a long wand here. I think I may use that one. And uh... So anyway, I'm just going to... I'm just going to blow through that end and it should be coming out the sides. The side hole I told you about. And I'm not sure. Yeah, I can see light coming. I'm putting light up through the bottom hole and I can see it out through the side now. So I must have cleared it. Now the other thing I'm going to do on this machine is I'm going to go uh, down in that bore of the carburetor right there and I'm going to blow up into it and blow, if, maybe if there's anything in there hopefully dislodge it. All right, I wanted to give you one last look at a different type of carburetor than the one you saw me work on on the snapper mower. The snapper mower had the jet drilled through here between the bottom nut and a port inside down in here like this one also has. That was your jetting for your main jet. Now this one, the jet is actually in the side. And I told you earlier, I believe that they can be found down in here and that's where you would take your screwdriver and just go down in there loosen it uh, they're usually brass so they're not magnetic the carburetor would have to be upside down to pull it out or shake it and then uh, you blow it out now this jet here I've loosened already and I'll show you how it can be seen see the light right through it and it looks really large, the hole, it's just the camera. It's a very small orifice, and that little clog, it ain't going to run unless it's on choke or starting fluid, or you just keep pumping the primer ball. So you clean that out, blow out your ports here, blow it out through here with compressed air. Uh, if you don't have that, a lot of times just a uh, choke cleaner can do the job. And uh, be careful of if, with your carburetor because these are your floats. And when you take your, some carburetors like this one, if you put it on its side, you lose, the pin fall, falls out. Next thing you know, your float, if you're upside down with a carburetor, falls off and then you lose that, that needle somewhere. And that goes down, that, that controls your 
flow of fuel. So you're going to need that, otherwise it'll flood. Okay, so my guess is in two poles, or two private poles, this thing starts and stays running. 